Dear friend, let's discover more of who we are together. Love, Haley and Amanda. Welcome, dear friends, to episode two of season four. But this is episode 53. 53. Hey, that's a lot of episodes. It really is. And we're really excited about today's episode because it's about a topic we really like, which is home interiors, feeling good in In your your home, home Home inside, in your home. (laughs) Did you like that? Do you know that Amanda and I, we used to have um, a duet band only called Haley and Amanda. And we had an EP. And And for those of you who don't know what an EP is, it's like a little, you know, demo record, like four or five songs. We felt really proud and slightly professional. But our EP title, do you remember the name of it? Home. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Was it home? Yeah. Because we were obsessed with the idea that we could go somewhere and make people feel like they were at home. And that we felt like home to each other. (laughs) That's That's sweet. That is sweet. And so we are talking about home interiors today, but also it is so true that people make a home more than even a space or design make a home. Right. That's true. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's like, you there's something like you can go anywhere as long as you're with these people you're it home feels like home yeah but it's very also very intriguing and true that the way that you create your space and design it also makes you feel a certain way and then in turn makes you live a different kind of life yeah that you go out into the world because you have this place of rest that reflects which all this we're going to get into, but like your personality and everything like that. And so there's a lot of clout around interior design. (laughs) And this is, you know, on social media, TV shows, everything. There's so many different styles. There's so many different ways of uh, decorating your home. And so we're not saying like one way is better than the other. We're kind of going to go through some principles based on this book that we're obsessed with right now, which we'll get into. But there's some like, we're going to like dig a little bit. We might, we might offend. We might even make people cringe. Uh Uh-oh. With a few things we're going to say. With a few things we're going to say. Do you know that I'm also just realizing that, you know, one of our favorite books that we talk about all the time is A Simpler Way, and it's kind of about going with the flow and, like, being fully present, and it's not going to be perfect, and your messes kind of make you better. Yes, it's kind of the theory we're about to say. Surprise! We can't get away from it. A Simpler Way. I'm serious. A Simpler Way should be our... A declaration of independence. If we have a pledge, so we have a pledge and a declaration. The whole book of a simpler way is the our constitution. Is our constitution declaration of independence? It is our ten commandments. It's everything. I'm gonna work on this later. Okay, to write it. So let's do our pledge. Oh, and I guess our pl- we have a pledge because this podcast is a utopia called Dear Friends where everything's <laughs> perfect and uh, the, everything's made up and the points, points don't, don't matter. matter. <laughs> That's a lot of mixing stuff together. That doesn't make sense. Okay, here we go. <coughs> I Whoa, are you okay? Yeah. Are you, are you a cases? I'm okay. A cases? <clears throat> Oasis. Utopia. Pool time at the Oasis. What's that? That's from the movie Waiting for Guffman. Oh. But it does, it does not pool time. <laughs> it's something else. Anyway, okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United Mates in America. And rarely in public is where we stand. One friendship under God, way under there, indivisible. Live pretty and just us for, for all. all. For all. For all. Amen. Hallelujah. All to listen. All to listen. Praise him. Okay. 
Praise him. Praise. Just us. Raisins. Praise him. <laughs> Raisins. That's our new merch. Or it's our new motto. Raisins. <laughs> okay, listen. For real. More like craisins. <laughs> Crazy raisins. But cranberry raisins. That sounded like almost a movie. Crazy rich Asians. <laughs> Crazy raisins. <laughs> okay, listen. I'm going to tell you this story real quick. <laughs> Is it about... It's the about person? the person whose book we're going to be talking about today. Hope you say her name right. I know we had to look up how to say her name correctly because we were both saying it wrong. And we'll explain that too. But I found her. So I, I, I've told you guys this before on the podcast. I'm hugely into social media for really one sole purpose. To follow interior designs. Designers. All that kind of stuff. I'm hugely into it. Pinterest. Instagram. It's what I'm following. Can I also make an insert just quickly? Okay. I personally, opinion, unbiased, believe that Amanda has a special gift oh, for... Haley. No, I'm serious. And and I told you this. You already know this. I know, for, why are you saying it? For, because it's not... Because you're actually, like, you're good at it in a way that... It's like something very natural to you. And so I think that you being interested in it and following it is because it really is something that I believe is a gift of yours. That's and so sweet. like I don't naturally follow interior design, but when I do, I like it and I'm into it and it's meaningful. But like you have something inside of you, I think, that you can read spaces. You're good at storytelling and design and picking stuff out that makes sense together. So also that's nice. You're welcome. Go ahead. Well, yeah. So, so you it's, it's really a, like it. It's a it. huge interest of mine yes. personally. And yeah, I care about my own home and we're going to get into all that. So does Haley. Haley's actually really good at home design. Too, but I really have to ask you a lot okay, of stuff. Wh whatever. We both like it, though. We're but interested love it. In yeah. It. So mm -hmm. I one account that I really love to follow is the UK Home and Garden account mm. on Instagram. Um so it's not the U.S. one. It's the U.K. one, Home and Garden. And I love it because, number one, they feature all of these, you know, interior designers. So you're seeing it's not like you're following one person. You're following this page that introduces you to a lot of different people. And they're all, like, pretty different. Yeah, really wide-ranging. But more of that traditional, I would say, English style um, of interiors, like a more traditional style with flair and things like that, which is my bag. So anyways, traditional I, with flair. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I love that account. And they started doing this thing called the Calico Club. And it's where they bring in a new designer and it's they they have like an interview with them, kind of like a podcast, but um, it's a video. And anyways, they highlighted this this interior designer I'd never heard of before. And she was just putting out a book. And I thought her name was Beta uh, Human. But it's... And I you thought, thought it was Beta. Beta. But her name is... Beata. Beata Human. Human. So, Beata Human, she put out this book. And I was so obsessed with her interior design after that uh, in initial encounter with her on the UK uh, Home and Garden account. So, I started following her. And then she put out this book and I was like, Haley, oh my God. I want this book so badly. Like I want to get my hands on it and it, but it was sold out and cause it, she's kind of blowing, she's blowing up, especially in the UK. And so it's called the, the book is called every room should sing. So for my birthday in May, this was Haley's present to me and it's, gorgeous number one the book is gorgeous it's this beautiful like burnt sienna with this photo on the front of her one of her little girl's rooms actually and it's so it's pretty beautiful I, I have it on my coffee table um but it's not just a coffee table book like i read it and i i go back and reference it and, and actually on your birthday when we went to the pool we i was looking at it like oh because i didn't open it 
obviously. And it was so beautiful. And then we started reading it together at the pool because it's so beautiful and intriguing. Yeah, I read it out loud. We wanted to start. Yeah. And we looked at through the pictures and it was just like really gorgeous book and really great content in the book. Interesting, unique take on home and interiors. interiors. Yeah. And so we decided we wanted to do maybe a two or three part series on this discussing the book because through the chapters, there's so much great insight and we want to talk through it because we think we have stuff to say about it too. So if you want to get the book, it is, it is called every room should sing and it is out there. You can, she is just restocked. You can buy it. It's incredible. And I actually think, which is, true of most things when it comes to design that it's so much more than what you think design is like color and pattern and shape you know like which is already interesting but it ends up this content ends up making you think about how you're living your life and the person you are and the person you want want to be. be and how it's so intertwined to your home so I actually think that this really does tie into our motto, which hopefully we're always trying to do episodes that represent that about trying to... <laughs> <laughs> about Is that not our new motto? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. About trying to become more of who we are. Mm. You're a crazen. Mm-hmm. So in that, I really feel... Like that is hitting the nail on the head because I'm like, I bought my first home. I'm trying to figure out how I want to be in it. You know, I just spent all of COVID inside of it. We're all thinking about our homes, thinking about does this represent me and how do I feel in this place? And when people come over now that they can, you know, what's it look like? All that kind of stuff. And I'm glad you said that about COVID because uh, one of the things during the quarantine There were things in my home that I had been wanting to do um, as a newlywed, you know, because Haley and I had lived together for seven years. And so I loved our home together, but it was our home. And Mm -hmm. here I I was in a new marriage and it needed to reflect him and I and make it feel like our space. And and so we had done some things to do that, of course, but there were some things that, you know, he didn't like that I brought into it before or I didn't like of his and we just needed to combine our styles and create our home together. Correct. And so in the quarantine, I went through the process of really decorating our home, mixing our style stuff that he likes, that I liked. And um, and I think a lot of people did that. Yeah. I'm, I'm you were thinking, starting to nest in your homes more because you had time to. Yeah. And it's. I'm just in my mind right now. I'm thinking about, I wonder, it's so interesting to me that it is two different words. The house, that's a structure and mm-hmm. serves a purpose of like your shelter and your protection. And why do we actually have this? What? How did it start? Why? And then it's the same thing, but a totally different word and meaning for home. Yeah. And I just like, what do you, I mean, I think we kind of know what the difference is, but. I think that there's a respect for both because it's kind of like when we watch Marie Kondo. Yeah. I was thinking about that when you were just talking. Marie Kondo's, um, is it called Tidying Up? Mm Mm-hmm. On, a, on Netflix, Boston, she has books and everything. Mm. Um, that the That's one thing right. that she does in the episode, it's actually super moving. Oh, it's so, so emotional. Before they start going through their belongings or anything like that, she makes them all sit down and she finds a spot on the floor and she puts her hands on the floor. She's like kneeling on the floor and they close their eyes in silence and it's just a time that they thank the house for providing them with shelter yeah and protection yep and that that kind of house more house definition right and then and then i feel like what she does is she helps them declutter and make it feel like a A home home. but she thinks the house because because they think we lose sight of that and i think the necessity of a house you know and that we actually really need it right and it's important I think that that's a really important thing to keep sight of, you know? So what, 
like this isn't I don't think that a home is like the frill or the extra or the, even the icing on the cake. Right. But it's something completely different. Yeah. And so it's really important to maintain that idea that also this is a necessity and it is a structure that is providing us with a life necessity. And then it's providing us with another life necessity that's more spiritual, mental, emotional, which is the home. Yes. Yeah. It's almost like the home is like the soul of the house. Quote Amanda Walker 2021. But don't you think it's like... I want to go look up home quotes. I know. Maybe I'm sure someone has said that before. But it's just like the... It how really we is. how we have a body that we live in and there's the digestive system and all these things that keep it working and it, when it's ne- necessary for us but we have our souls that are like the heartbeat of who we are as individuals and i feel like that is a, a maybe, metaphor to what a house and home are and maybe design is the ex- self expression quote Haley Yell, 2021. Well, because then I started thinking about um, clothes and fashion and stuff. Like, we wear clothes because they are a life necessity and they to help protect us our breasts. That, yeah, they help, they're a necessity to cover and protect us. And then also... Style is... Right. Expression. Man. Mic drop, we're done. Episode over. See you next week. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but before we get into... Uh, The book, Every Room Should Sing. Of course, we've got to quote David White, our favorite poet of all time. Because this book, Consolations, Mm -hmm. is like we've we've talked about this one a lot. But it's full of his definitions of kind of everyday words. And it's it's like a a chapter, but it's like three or maybe four pages per word word, that he's he's describing. So there's one word in here and it's rest. Yeah, because I think when you think about what a home's purpose is, one of the major things you would think about would be rest. And so his first line of uh, about rest is, rest is the conversation between what we love to do and how we love to be. What we love to do and how we love to be. And can you tell me what you think that means about home, like how it relates to home? Because he's talking about rest. Yes. Well, so I think that he's talking about really, as an umbrella, being yourself. Yeah. And that it's not, it's the things that you like to do and love to do, but also how you love to be and exist in the world as you're doing those things. Yeah. And so... If we're talking about home, I would think that it's not just a place where you come and you just rest doesn't mean just, you know, you're so relaxed, you go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I feel so much like myself in this place. I'm at rest. Right. What do you think? I totally agree. I think your home. Well, and I think there I'm an introvert, actually. And I know, Haley, you're. You're a very extroverted introvert. I'm an extroverted introvert, but I am at my core an introvert and I'm a homebody. Like, tell me like, hey, let's go out or you can come over for a dinner party at my house. I'm going to choose to do the dinner party at my house 100% of the time. But would you choose to be at home alone by yourself or go to a dinner party at someone's home? Yeah, probably go. But I like, but I like meeting in people's homes better than even going out. But, I, but when I say I'm a homebody, what I mean by that is I, <clears throat> I like to make my home be a place where I love to be, right? Where I walk in the door and I, and it's so funny that you say that because it's like, it, it is almost like me exploded mm-hmm. on the walls. Yeah. And I walk in and it's my little safe haven. And it's not just mine. It's my husband's too, but it's like where you, we come in and it's this, it's this very nurturing, cozy place because it is a reflection of you. It makes you feel comfortable in your own skin, in your own home, because it's you. Do you feel that way about your house? I do. I think I'm getting there. Yeah. I think initially, especially during COVID, I was making it more of the um, 
traditional sense of something that was more restful, you know, like I wanted it to, when I, I had just moved in. So it was very empty, very white, very minimal, but like, that's what made me feel good during that time. I think if I had a bunch of stuff, oh my God, yes. And so I tend to be a more minimalist because it makes me feel more calm and like myself but then I have these places where I like to self-express and they those like personal things give me joy which I think this first quote that we were going to read from Beata's book I almost said beta Ugh, kill me American um and it's actually by Billy Baldwin. Yeah, and she she references it in chapter one. Yeah, she has a lot of different quotes from other people. And, and then she kind of talks about them through her design. And it says, nothing can be interesting. I think she says, well, it says nothing, nothing is interesting. I repeat, nothing is interesting unless it's personal. And I think that's what you were just saying. You know, you walk into this house and you feel like, this is so personal to me that it's interesting to a point where I feel like myself. And that's why when you joined forces with Maris, it couldn't be this, it couldn't be personal for him if, if it was a bunch of my stuff and my interests and stuff, you know? So I think that was real. It's a really beautiful thing. It's powerful for people that are joining up and starting to live together, starting a life that they make it really personal for both people. Well, and this is where I'm going to step on some toes. I'm Ouch! Gonna, I might offend. Segment. Step on toes. With your steel-toed boots. Ouch! <laughs> gotta find Segment. some good music okay, we to gotta put, put behind something that. Under that. Um, so here, here's my kind of issue with some aspects of interior design. I like what you're about to say. You step on those toes, oh, girl. I'll step Okay, um, there are rules to design and there are people who are good designers but have a really cookie cutter neutral approach to every home that they do the, the, the design for. Which feels a bit safe. Yes, and it's still pretty. It is pretty. And, and I somebody like somebody that I'm specifically thinking of, and I will call it out, is Studio McGee. Mm-hmm. And and people with that type of aesthetic where they don't take any chances. They go neutral. It's a lot of creams. It's a lot of tans. Maybe some navy in there. Um, black. Yeah, maybe some black um, cabinets on a bottom, like a bottom cabinetry or something to bring depth and interest. But overall, it's this very safe, neutral earthy palette which I pop- again is pretty why do you think they do that why do you think well, they i think feel it's easy like- to replicate okay well and like so that's that's someone's that's a style and it's kind of like remember when everyone was into in the 90s and in kind of uh night like mcmansions or nicer houses it was like this uh italian uh tuscany feel where it was like a bunch of vines and stuff yeah like like painted and but like a lot of crown molding yes and then it's like everybody had these certain types of tiles and and same backsplashes and all this stuff and then then it went to okay tans out and everything was gray and white Mm -hmm. and like if you didn't if you went into like a rental home the, the walls better be gray and the trim better be white and it better be like white and black granite countertops Mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying like and then boy when subway tile came in yes and like okay we're switching everything needs to be white and everything needs to be you know so it's kind of like yes it's easy to replicate and it's a there's trends and and there's different styles regardless of time and trends like there are different there's modern you know there's traditional there's a bunch of different in-betweens and I think that for these people, they have a look. And so when someone hires them, they're going to replicate that look for their home. And it's going to be pretty. But is it a reflection of that person or the designer's style? Is it interestingly personal? Right. And something that I like about um, Beata is that she 
yeah, her style is all about quirk and things like that, but she wants to find your quirk hmm. as your when you're her client. Like she wants and she wants you in the book wants you to find your quirk. Um and she kind of gives you a recipe of how to kind of put it all together, but it's not in where it's all gonna look the same like every home she does. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course. Which I respect. Me too. And and Is I that you stepping on people's toes? Yeah, yeah, because I think people who maybe aren't as interested in interior design but want a pretty home, they just want it to look nice. And so they don't they don't know how to put they feel like they don't know how to put something together that would be personal to them and to come across good. So they want to go to Target and buy the pillow that they saw on the show with this color couch. You know what because I'm saying? Because you can <laughs> like something and it still not be a reflection of yourself. Right, of course. And I think that that's a slight, like, it's easy to do that because you think, I like this when I see it on the internet or a show, so it must be a reflection of myself. Right. But I think it actually takes a little bit more work and self-reflection, which you don't think goes with interior design but it does especially if you want it to be a place of rest and before you read this quote on rest she says in in that same chapter where she's kind of talking about that nothing can be interesting unless it's personal to you so maybe it looks pretty but it's not interesting right so Mm -hmm. this home Mm. this home is put together the colors are right that's a good distinction but is it interesting yeah because if it's not personal, then it can't be interesting. Ooh. And and then she says, spaces occupy us too. We occupy spaces, but O-M-G. more than more than we realize, they also occupy us. And so the quote from David White, um, I believe it's on the next page, yep. under under the same word rest that we we quoted at the beginning of the episode it says we are rested when we are a living exchange between what lies inside and what lies outside when we are an intriguing conversation between the potential that lies in our imagination and the possibilities for making that internal image real out in the world (laughs) well well because that book's not about an interior design Hell no. And he's talking about rest. Right. But how it how manifests itself yes. in this conversation is totally her, hurting. Her saying that, number one, for something to be interesting, it has to be personal. And then two, that you're, rep- that you're occupying a space, but that it's occupying you. That's exactly what he's saying. It's this conversation back and forth with what's inside of me and personal to me and my imagination when I look out in this space if it doesn't reflect you will not be at rest yeah oh my lord boom mind blown mind blown well and and it's kind of like in life we don't have a ton of opportunity to fully put this true reflection of ourselves out there right it's it it can be through self expression in our in our clothes it can be through the design in our home that we own mm-hmm. unless you're a creative you know typically unless you're like putting out work like you like artwork that is this reflection of you people aren't doing that a lot mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying in mm-hmm. their in their jobs but it can all, I mean, but you can even in conversation in, in relationship with others, be that expression of yourself and what he was saying, like putting it out into the world mm. to be seen. Yeah. But but your home is a major area and an avenue for you to have that self expression, self expression to find rest. Yeah. In. And I think that that's so interesting because that means technically you can get ideas from other people and inspiration, yeah. but you really can't copy exactly someone else because then it won't be personal to you and then it won't be restful and a self-expression and that's actually a quote from simpler way too that if you're really moving through life in a playful fully present way and you're experimenting instead of trying to get like every answer right then you can't assume that someone else's answer is your answer Mm. and so Again, with design and especially with a home that's so personal, 
it's kind of, I mean, and I do it too, but we're misleading ourselves to think that we can just look at something, copy someone else, Replicate and then it, it will feel like ourselves. Right. Right. Um, and so that leads into this kind of, this quote that she has that we love in the book about having a little bit of bad taste. And it's on page 38. Sorry, I've got the book in my lap and Haley's got my mic. Um, so she has little quotes throughout the book. And Highly recommend this This book, quote's yeah. from Diana uh, Vreeland. And it says, A little bad taste is like a nice splash of paprika. We all need a splash of bad taste. It's hearty. It's healthy. It's physical. I think we could use more of it. No taste is what I'm against. Ooh, no, no taste. taste. That's what I'm saying about the bland blah blah. Like you, and what I mean by no taste, I don't mean like, ooh, it's ugly. It's just like, this is fine. Yeah, this it's looks not like interesting. Every it's- room I've seen, this looks like a freaking hotel room. Or, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being rude and I don't mean to be rude. Or you're judgy. still on the toes stepping segment. Yeah, I'm sorry. And and also, if your home looks like that, I, I'm not trying to, I, I'm saying I don't want to be mean, but I'm being mean and I don't mean to. But but all I'm saying you is- You don't mean to? I don't mean to be mean. But I just like, I like this perspective of a little bit of bad taste. And what I think that means, we were kind of talking about it. What mm-hmm. I think a little bit of bad taste means is, yes, there are rules to design. And there's a whole school around interior design. So it is a legitimate business, study, degree, everything. I want to ask a question, but I'm afraid that it's going to derail everything. So will you just tell me if it will derail everything? Yeah. Who made all those... Um, rules and well okay so i like who said this is good design no no, no, but it's kind of like it's like design is a combination of a lot of schools of thought around like color theory which you and art know about this plain real yeah Yeah. they're they're like complementary things like there are just some laws balance yes there are some laws around natural design that i got you that have been studied around specifically like furniture and yes, so like balance in a room and asymmetric design can, you know, opposed to um, balance or not symmetrical. Balance, symmetrical design. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of it that is from a lot of different schools of thought. I think it's and not there one, are, there's not one person that was like, this is good design or whatever. It's a lot of, it's a lot of other design playing into it that is just natural in the world. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So what I was saying about bad taste, what I think bad taste is, is it just means if you do everything too perfect. By the book. Yeah. Like following all those rules to where it's like everything is balanced. Everything is the right exact color scheme. Like throwing something in there that's a little bit off brings that what she says like hardiness and brings like the personality and it's healthy and it's physical and it just kind of throws everything off its game it it, i always say this when i do floral design too i'm like if we do everything the same on every table then when we look across a room it's not interesting it looks like okay i know what this looks like i don't need to explore this anymore i've looked at it once if it's all like this or you know what add dimension and interest and oddities and things it's like whoa this is what's going on and i think it's interesting she didn't say for flavor and hardiness she didn't say salt she said paprika yeah which is a little stank yeah it's got a little stank to it it's a little bit more of a rare thing it's red it's spicy it's it it's kind of weird yeah so i don't think she's even saying hey, add some interesting things in. She's saying like, add something that might be weird for someone. Yeah, but that you like. Yeah. And and I think that for me, one of those things in my house we were talking about is, and I'll show, I'll post a picture of it on our uh, stories on Instagram. But I asked, I commissioned Haley to do a portrait. I, I had purchased on a uh, Facebook Marketplace, this gorgeous, or, gorgeous ornate 
gold frame that was super old and like super Pretty ornate. Ga- yeah, gaudy. Really gaudy. <laughs> and nothing in my house is gaudy. So it was this really crazy frame. And I really wanted her to paint a portrait of Teddy Roosevelt <laughs> smiling because I have this picture laughing. of him smiling and laughing because he's my favorite president. I love the things under his administration that he accomplished. Anyways, I've just, I've always been obsessed with him. I've read biographies about him over the years and I just thought it would add, it's something I love and it would add a lot of personality over, over my dining table. the dining room table. <laughs> and so she painted this gorgeous portrait of him and it, Every time I have people over, real he's conversation just, piece, and he's just smiling down <laughs> on us while we eat. It's like my favorite thing in my house, and that's odd. That's it's, pap- it's pap- that's pap- paprika. Oh, it's a more than a dash of it. I've, now, when people go slice. into people's homes and they see something kind of off, they're gonna be like, "That's the paprika." <laughs> I just found the pap. I love it, and you know what? That also makes it more playful and it takes that pressure off of being perfect and everything being perfectly beautiful and what's everyone going to think about this no it brings you to the table and lets you be a little more fun and whimsical like like if I would have put a a painting that I found at TJ Maxx Uh oh that was the right color scheme for the room so it it tied in and it would probably look great on that wall simple black frame yes if I would have put that it would have tied the room together very nicely. And when we had dinner parties, but no, no one, one would say anything it. about yeah. it. Because it's a dumb replicated picture from TJ Maxx. Mm, I love this conversation. I do too. But uh, but I'm just saying like that is that is a really good point in this book that she talks about. That you've got to maintain imagination and fun in your yeah. design. Like it needs to be that that self-reflection of you in in some weird ways, kind of, you know, like maybe other people won't like it. Well, it's not their house. Yeah. And they can come over and talk about it and then they can leave. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. And um, there's another quote in the book. I think it's, it's by Shoals. I don't remember the first name, but we Mm -hmm. can post it. That talks about maturing into childhood. Yeah. He's an author and she read his book. It's like Cinnamon Shop and other stories <laughs> but that's his big quote as he says you should mature into childhood and actually david white has a quote too that says to grow younger towards death yeah and i think it's that same thing and it's so interesting that they're talking about it in terms of a home and home design but it's like this is where you spend your days this is where your days are passing and this is what's feeding your s- feeding you internally and then what you're putting out as expression and I hope to God that we're all trying to as we get older and mature that we maintain that that playfulness yes and if you don't have it out in the world if it's even that quote like out of sight out of mind you know like if you don't look around and see anything playful or like that sparks your imagination well do it at your house yeah I love this I'm serious. I love it too. It makes me want to like, and also, um, well, and she, she talks about finding like one of a kind pieces because everything is so like commercially made. And she said that because of that, most things have straight lines when it comes to furniture and things like that, because if you can do it in mass, mass production yeah, and mass production, it's usually straight lines to make, they make machines that do that faster. And so, there you've got to take time to to put your home together it's not like something that happens like that it should be a journey because you should be picking up things along the way not like i gotta go ikea because we need this 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 and this to make this room and so we're gonna get it at this whole store right here right now so we can buy one of these room you know they have those room layout Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna buy this room put it in my home because i need a living room you know when it's like you should be a collector of things that reflect your personality along the way and in that journey. And I think you're actually really good at this when it comes to finding pieces that are kind of uh, one-offs and more unique. You like, oh, you did. You talked about how you like are so good at Facebook Marketplace and stuff. Yeah, I'm because, like a Facebook Market queen. Yeah, and also in terms of our conversation on consumerism, I mean, some of the most beautiful things out there are things that were other people's for a long time 
and yeah. they have that they're giving it they're passing it on and it can come into your world and your journey and it's so much more personal and you're not just contributing to the mass production and consumerism that's out there personally i think you know if you want to buy a couple things at ikea or whatever that yeah, are, i do that too yeah because if you do buy something really simple that blends in well then you can kind of highlight those unique pieces that you have found and brought into your home and this is the perfect time to tell the quote on this in this book tove jansen she quotes him on page 55 in the book and he says a person can find anything if he takes the time that is, if he can afford to look. Mm. And while he's looking, he's free and finds things he never expected. And so when you give yourself the permission to, okay, I don't, yeah, we need a couch right now because we need some place to sit. But like, I don't have to rush to get the rug and all this stuff. Like, I want to find things that really reflect me, speak to me. Um, I think if you give yourself the freedom and time to do that, you'll find things you never expected to find. Like, I love thrift store shopping. I love antique shopping. I love Facebook Marketplace. And it's just kind of like letting things come together over time and instead my, of all at once. My favorite thing too about acquiring things over time that that aren't just getting uh, reused things is like, I love getting stuff like on my travels. Yes. And, and they remind you yes, of times. Memories. Yes. And it's like this little token that may have cost hardly anything, you know, but you you could afford to yeah. look and you are pre fully present at this memory. And like I have a... Um, what do you got? An ashtray in my backyard that's gorgeous. And it cost me like two euros, but I was on a trip by myself in Toledo, Spain. And I like remember who I bought it from. And so anytime somebody comes in my backyard and like, well, whether they smoke a cigarette or not, but you know, it's, it's just like, like a decor piece too. That's yeah. And it's in the chairs in the backyard where they were like my grandfather's and stuff. And so um, I love, there's also a place that we're obsessed with here in Dallas that makes you feel like you're not in Dallas. And we used to spend every friend anniversary there. And it's this tree house, pretty much. It was an Airbnb tree house. Mm -hmm. And it used to be a sculptor's and it's just gorgeous. You cannot imagine, but it just looks like it's all these little things from someone's journey. And it doesn't look like there were bought from someone else it no. looks like i got this when i traveled to india or to africa or yeah, whatever. it feels very personal the, the home feels very personal and like one of the best things that uh, my husband and i did on our honeymoon we we honeymooned in santa fe because we got married in new mexico we went to this pottery shop in um santa fe down the street from our hotel and it was like these gorgeous handcrafted pieces from Native American tribes that are that are still living in that area, but some of them were like very very old pieces. Some of them were newer, and 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 you got there was like all this information around each type of pottery, and so it was super expensive. But one of the things that we did was we spent some money on this this piece of pottery that hangs on the wall, and it's got oh, a scoop it. to like we use it to hold our keys and it's it. hanging by our front door. And it's like every day when I, it's gorgeous right. and it's so special to me. It's like every day when I leave and grab my keys and every mm. day when I come home and put them in there, it's not just a key holder. It is like this memento and remembrance of our honeymoon and this really it. special time. And it's, and, and, so that's like very, that brings like a lot of joy to you personally, but also when people come into your home, those are the things that make people, it interesting. Yeah. And that people feel like they're in a place that's very welcoming because you're sharing yourself. You're not sharing Ikea. That's not right. That's not a personal. That's not very vulnerable. Yeah. Like it's yes, it's true. You know, it's like you're introducing someone to how much do you want someone to know you when they come into your home and you can say it, it will show. I don't want you to know me very much at all because everything is everything plain, here doesn't reflect me. Right. Or it's like 
put your keys in this thing <laughs> where I got married and I'll tell you this story. And now not only have you like, this is a reflection of me. Come in, please. And that makes me feel like a, a space that I would rather go into than something that was just quote unquote designed, designed quote unquote perfect. perfect. And that, that leads us to the next and last point is perfection is not welcoming and it's overrated. And so this quote on Ooh, page... stepping on some toes again, girl. <laughs> Ready? Um, this quote on page 78 by William Morris, he says, all rooms ought to look as if they were lived in and to have, so to say, a friendly welcome ready for the incomer. And so it's just like what you were saying that it, if I think like spaces that have touched me the most or have made me feel something are spaces that are personal. Yeah. And have been put together with real thought and consideration and self-expression and not just cookie cutter, want to look like this person, do what this person did, replicate this. But like, this is me in decor. Like, this is me and my husband or me and my family or me by myself. Like, this is a reflection. And and I think that that, that rest that that causes is contagious. You know, I mean, because what you're saying is, what we were saying in the beginning is now you've made a space that's that's a conversation between the inside of me and the outside that you see. You know, it's yeah. not it's not a huge disconnect. You don't meet me and get one vibe and then come to my house and get another vibe. Yeah, that doesn't feel calming or restful or anything. And I think that when people come into your home and they see that that is a clear reflection, they will also feel that kind of restfulness. And, and welcoming. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important with the world that we live in and how much we're put out into the world in so many ways with work and social media and relationships that when we come home at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that we can step into a place that makes us feel that calm and restfulness and, it, and, and, and like, like what we're yourself saying, and like not sleepy, but like even maybe inspirational for you to do the things you love recharge and just recharge you to go back out into the world. Um, oh. So listen, we didn't even get through half of her book. Um, Beata, love we love your book, by the way, if you listen to this, we would freak um, because it is really it's really intriguing to think about your design this way. And by the way, it, it means like whatever you would express so we're not saying it needs to be this what her style is like traditional and quirky and it's i don't like, think she would say that either no but it's this very very personal reflection of you and so i i recommend you read it but also i want to do a part two or even three of going too, through this book I think that was only a third of the it book, was only maybe. a third of the book and you've got to get the book because it's, it's so beautiful or follow her on instagram beautiful Jeez. Bayada, Bayada, buy the book. Bayada, oh, <laughs> Bayada, buy the book. I'll tell you what. <gasps> um. Anyways, guys, we hope this was an interesting conversation for you to listen to and be a part of because I loved it. Me too. I, I mean, I'm like, feeling jazzed, it, juiced. Let's finish my gallery wall behind now. us now. <laughs> okay. Because you know what. Her gallery wall that she's talking about sounds like a design thing she's copying from someone, but every piece every in piece it is so personal. To me. Yes. I, and I you've even, taken a lot of time to gather those pieces. Yes, I've gathered them. And you know what I even brought over from my parents' house when I was cleaning out their house? What? This old painting of theirs that they had in their very first home when they were first oh married. Oh, my And she was like, God. it was like in the back of my mom's closet and under a bunch of stuff. And I was like, what, what is, is this, this doing back here? And she goes, well, it just doesn't go with my decor anymore. But I kept it because it's the, one of the first things we got. Oh, my gosh. And I was gosh. like, I'm taking it and putting it in my home. <gasps> She's like, I would love that. That's so sweet. I know. I'm really excited about it. So, that, you know, what can I say? You've got to make it yours and personal. So I hope this inspires you guys to, I'm not saying like loathe your home or be like, great, I've got to start over. But just start adding it things that, you know, are personal. And, and omitting place. And omitting things that don't bring you joy. Like if there's something that you walk by every day in your house or stare at and you're just like, ugh, like get rid of it. Ain't nobody got time get for it, that. Get it on Facebook Marketplace. I might buy it. Seriously. <laughs>
Well, you guys have a great week. Buy the book, follow her on Instagram, whatever you got to do. And we will continue the conversation maybe in a part two or three. Love you, little crazen. Live pretty crazens. <laughs> <laughs>